Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to be discussing energy profile diagrams. So we're going to take a look at what we mean by an energy profile diagram. We're then going to define some key concepts like activation energy and transition state and look at examples of exothermic and endothermic chemical reactions and how their diagrams look. So what do we mean by energy profile diagram? Well, it looks a little something like this. So it's, we're, we're saying it's, it's a graph, basically, of the progress of reaction or time um, over on the bottom and energy up the side. So obviously we're going from low energy all the way up to a high energy state. We see, um, so, so essentially it represents an energy pathway for the chemical reaction to occur. So we're talking about a chemical change process. We're not talking about physical changes like um, melting or boiling. Um, and so what we see is that we have a line or a point that represents the reactants um, and their energy content, or called enthalpy, the products and their energy content, uh, which is, so their enthalpy. And then we have two points written here and then one that's not. The first one is called activation energy. This one up here is the transition state. Um, and then the, there is a point called the change in enthalpy, which is the difference from the beginning level to the end level. So you can see here for this reaction that the product is down lower than the reactants. Okay, we'll see an example, another example of what that's like towards the end. Okay, and so um, those are some of the key features of a diagram like this. All right, so let's take a look first at the activation energy. Now we're going to unpack this further in a, in a, an, a subsequent video on collision theory. But the idea essentially is that activation energy is the energy required for the chemical reaction to occur. It's the input, the stuff that has to go in um, in order for it to happen. If we consider this, you know, we're talking about like going up and over a hill, that it, the activation energy is the size of the hill, how far up it needs to go in order for them to be able to roll back down to the other side. Okay, so the higher, the bigger this is, the more energy is needed for that reaction to start. Some reactions, it, was, it will be really small. You'll get it going and then it, it will um, be self-sustaining. Other ones need continual input in order for that reaction to happen. Okay, so the, um, but like I said, we'll explain what that means a bit further in the next video. Let's take a look at the transition state up the top here. So transition state, or sometimes called an activated complex, is the intermediate stage in the chemical reaction, the point between reactants and products. So all the existing bonds have been broken by this stage. Energy has been put in to break those bonds, which is how it works. And then, But yet we haven't formed the new bonds to um, result in the products yet. So we have the situation where all of the existing bonds have been broken. We have separate atoms or we have this kind of big combined state um, prior to then re-establishing the bonds in the products. And so it is the highest energy state of, of this whole kind of process. So we start at one level, we go all the way up to this top level and then back down to the other side. So the reason that it's at this highest energy state is it's the least stable situation. For these atoms to not be connected to one another in their final orientation is very unstable. And so the system achieves more stability by reforming new bonds. Okay, so that's, that's what that represents. All right, so let's have a, a look at exothermic and then endothermic chemical reactions. That is, some chemical reactions release um, energy to the surroundings and make them warmer. Okay, and we call them exothermic. Exo is out of, and then thermic is heat. You know, so heat or, in, you know, or thermal energy out. So this is the sort of typical diagram for an exothermic reaction. We still have our, our hill, um, and we have our level of our reactants and our products. But notice that the products is down lower than the reactants represented by this purple line. That is, there's more energy in the bonds than in the reactants than there is in the bonds of the products. Mm -hmm. And the difference between that, um, those two levels is energy that ends up being lost to the surroundings. So the particles themselves that are reacting when the, the final result has less energy and so then that excess is lost to the surroundings. That is, there is a net energy decrease of the system. So um, the, cha the change in enthalpy or the change in the energy content is negative. It's gone down. Okay, so delta H represents the change in enthalpy or, or the, the, the energy content and so it's negative. 
Okay, so that's exothermic reactions. Now, classic exothermic reaction is something like combustion of a hydrocarbon. So, you know, we burn natural gas and it releases a very large amount of energy to the surroundings. That's part of why we use it, because we can heat things up with it. Um, and so, um, yeah, and so there's a net energy decrease. Um, but now we can look at an endothermic reaction, which is the opposite. So a chemical reaction where energy has to go into. Endo means into. Um, so thermal energy going into the system. Notice here we start, if we start at the same point that our energy content of our products is up higher, there has been a positive increase in the energy content. That is, there's more energy in the, in the bonds of the products than there are in the bonds of the reactants. Okay, we still have our transition state, we still have our hill, but we get less energy out at the other end than we had to put in to start with. Okay, um, so and this energy it gets gained from the surroundings, which would themselves would be colder. You know, so the water that it's in would get colder when the particles in, that are reacting together are, um, are doing so. That is, there is a net energy increase in the system itself, the particles that are reacting. Okay, so... Um, so classic like chemical cold packs and things like that are a classic example of an endothermic reaction. Lots of dissolving processes are endothermic. Um, not all of them, but some of them where when you dissolve the salt in water that then the actual overall temperature will decrease. Okay, so we looked at what is an energy profile diagram, how we draw them and what are some of the key features of them. We defined concepts of activation energy and transition state and we looked at some examples of um, diagrams for exothermic and endothermic processes. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.